I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something today. And I've invited, and I appreciate Sheila Grafe coming and sharing your story with us. Well, I appreciate you having me. Lovely Thank young you. lady, and she has such an interesting story, and a multi-generational Mormon. Certainly. Uh, from all sides. In fact, you even worked for a, a history uh, Family history, yeah, like company? a historical uh, records company. Yeah. And so you did a lot of family history on your of your own. Yes, yeah, so I was able to do some research on my own, and yeah. uh, at the time I was researching uh, Mormonism and Christianity, and so it really was an eye opener for wow. me to be able to dig in and have access to those kinds of. Uh, records. Yeah, and were you, was your family back from Europe or where, where were yes, you? Yes, there were converts. My father's line was a convert um, from Sainine, Bern, uh, the Katana Sainine in Switzerland. And oh, so, Switzerland. as a matter of fact, it was his um, great grandfather that converted in about 1874, came to Provo, lived in a dugout, and was able oh, to, um, you know, kind of raise a Mormon family for several generations. And Polygamous? Um, you, not not him, but um, some of the of my father's maternal line was polygamist, and out in Spring City, and my uh, mother's side, they went back to England and also New York. They were able to follow, you know, the saints yeah. across the West, and they came from polygamous roots also. So I actually had it on both sides of my family, both maternal and paternal. My goodness. Yes. Wow, interesting. Where were you born? I um, I was born here in Provo, so oh. I'm I'm Utah, and okay. uh, born and raised, and really the whole family has stayed here for that many generations. Yeah, fascinating. Yes. I haven't had occasion to leave or anything. Not a, not a lot. As a matter of fact, yeah. out of my uh, nine siblings um, that my you mother had, nine, nine brothers. And well, sisters. mother had nine children. Okay. And and I actually have two um, step brothers, so we have an, a family okay. of eleven. Okay. Uh, but my mother bore nine children and. She, we all stayed in Utah primarily, except for I have one older brother that was able to travel with the Air Force, oh, interesting. and one in California and Nevada, but you know, relatively close yeah. knit family still. And would, were you a, a young primary girl, and did you go yes. into young women? And yes, all that? my mother was very active, um, so raised all the children LDS, and we were, you know, active in primary and young women's mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know. Took seminary, did you? Yeah, I took seminary both in junior high school as yeah, well as high school. High school. Um, it was just sort of an obligation requirement, really. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Ever any questions come up about the church or anything that you remember in those young years? I, I don't know that I was a real student as far as of history. <laughs> I think I became more interested in history and uh, research as, as an older adult. Yeah. But as a kid, it was mostly um, how our family, we were a nuclear family, you know, and my mother had been married several times. And my father was not active, and so it was very, um, our family life was sort of a split family. We had, you know, half Mormon, half what I call unworthy. <laughs> unworthy Mormons. <laughs> unworthy Mormons. We were also Jack Mormons, um, as, the, as the term goes here in Utah. And I think most people know that that might just be somebody that doesn't regularly attend right, or maybe is right. not in, 
is not active but is still considers themselves Maybe Mormon. Breaks the word of wisdom or yes. like paying their tithing or something. Correct. You know, uh, you know cause uh, my father would drink coffee and smoke cigarettes and um, that was always kind of frowned on and so um, also had, you know, had some alcoholism. Yeah. So, but mother always tried to be so worthy and she was very good, very good homemaker. She um, was participated in the primary events and all the young women events. My father actually, ironically enough, was able to be um, a help to the Boy Scouts and all of the young men activities. Uh, so he was really well loved part, and um, respected in the community and the yeah. ward, you know, the neighborhood, even though uh, dad was not active. They still accepted him, which was awesome. You know, over the years, uh, I've run into a number of men just like that. They're so good hearted. Mm -hmm. They'd do anything for anybody. Yeah, very giving. And they want to give to the boys. Right. And and yet they're not fully worthy. Yes. It's interesting you use that word when we talked, or you know, in, in a little thing that we talked about before. And my wife and I, Carla and I, we actually sat and said, worthy. I don't think we ever say that as a Christian. We said that to each other. Yes. I don't think we use the word worthy as a Christian yes. because it doesn't really apply. I wanted to say that before I forgot it because yes. do, you, do you sense that too? I mean, of course. We I, don't quite say the word worthy as a Christian. Sure. And now that, you know, God has um, given me new eyes and, and a new heart, so to speak, and given me his Holy Spirit, I, things that I knew of when, as a child, like pre-existence with Mormonism yeah. or uh, that all children were the children of God, yeah. not the ones that were just, right. uh, you know, claimed by <laughs> right. into his family, into his kin kingdom, what, which the Bible teaches. It was always a worthy or unworthy. And so I had an extreme oh. amount of guilt. I think most Mormons have a lot of pain and shame about certain sin. And unknowing about where they're headed. I, I believe that's yeah. true too. When I think about my salvation or as a Christian, your eternal salvation, it's completely different in Mormonism. You feel like you're trying, 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 you know, to earn your salvation, earn your righteousness and earn your worthiness right. with your, you know, interviews and your full tithe paying and your mm -hmm. temple work and such. It's such a burden and I see it, um, you know, in the women that would visit me, like my visiting teachers, sure. um, they were just over obligated. You know, and I didn't, um, luckily I, I don't have that um, feeling in Christianity. I do serve, but I do it, you know, out of, out of, love. Out of love. Yeah. And, and I don't not... feel obligated if sometimes I can't make it to an activity or if I can't, Absolutely. you know, serve in some capacity if I just don't have just the time saying, or I energy. Don't have the time, I don't, yeah, or, you know, people always need money and want money and sure. stuff. And just, you want to be a cheerful giver is what the New Testament yes. teaches. and. So there's no, there's, I've noticed that, that judging and the pride is gone and, and it just, it's just so much freer. There's a freedom. There is a freedom. Yeah. And you do feel, you know, judged and condemned yeah. in a lot of ways if you're not living, you know, the way that yeah. maybe the rest of the community does. When I was a child, you know, several decades ago, <laughs> um, it was very close-knit Mormon uh, communities. Sure. You know, the ward was the neighborhood and... It was your uh, life, yeah. especially you know from my county, uh, there in Utah County, and you know there was just an expectation of everyone. Yeah, I I didn't ever feel like going on a mission, however, and I didn't ever feel like um, actually getting married in the temple because I well, I just couldn't understand goal. temple yeah. marriage um, yeah. because of my family. I just it didn't ever made any sense to me to be married in there the temple. There is a practical problem it seems like with a lot of marriages and with the temple and who's married to who and so on what did you notice yeah well because um, I know my mother uh, maybe still suffers from the idea that her last husband uh, my father uh, never was worthy enough to be married in the temple although he took on a large family and, and raised everyone, <laughs> including, you know, the, the last three and the stepchildren. I mean, he just provided for 11 children. Wow. Really good, solid guy, you know, kind of a Renaissance man, but just never had that temple worthiness right. and really never wanted that temple worthiness. So that could be part of why I never really completely considered temple marriage. It, it probably because I knew 
my parents hadn't done so, and so it just it wasn't a oh. as a solid idea as some Mormon families that yeah. might not be as mixed. Yeah. Did you have, did you feel the church was true and had a testimony? So I had a testimony um, of the church, and also of Joseph Smith, but I also feel like because I was raised that way yeah. in the Mormon uh, religion, that it just came as part of the program. So I don't know if I had a deep <laughs> uh, heart feeling um, or loyalty to Joseph Smith, but I did bear my testimony. Yeah. Uh, you know, that it's sort of cliche that I know the church is true and that the prophet Joseph Smith, you know, is a true prophet and whatever, whoever the yeah, main uh, or prophet, current prophet yeah. is. Yeah. But, um, as I grew older, because I myself, because of sin, because I myself was not worthy, you know, I had a lot of shame attached to even really going into a Mormon church. Um, I remember when my children were young, I tried to go back to church for a while, yeah. and um, it, it, it just it didn't fit. It just never fit. I think God was calling me all along to a Christian church. Um, he had me involved with the Boy Scouts as my uh, young oldest son was a young Cub Scout, yeah. and it was with a community church there oh. locally in Provo. Um, and so I think God was always kind of calling me into a relationship with Him, <laughs> but I wasn't paying any attention. Yeah, you weren't listening uh, Correct. Or yes, something. I wasn't. I, you know, sort Kept of was a rebel. the church was true. I mean, you just well, thinking, that. and also, you know, with the Mormon background, you have a lot of different ideas about uh, yeah. what Christianity is. You think that the preachers are saying something that's not true. Yeah. So if I had a television program on, or if I heard a, a Christian pastor speak, it was always, I was always skeptical mm. about what they were saying because yeah. I was raised Mormon. Yeah. So I had a hard time trusting well, the true gospel of Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah. So you, well, we don't trust. We didn't trust Christianity. It was just our little net network of Mormons and yes. like you said the ward and the bishop and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I felt very skeptical so did about you attend Christianity. A, finally attended a Christian church? I did. It was um, I was into my 40s when I uh, became born again and um, God really got a hold of me. Actually maybe I was late 30s but um, God got a hold of me. I was dating at the time um, a gentleman who's now my husband who came from a Lutheran background uh, but also was a rebellious young adult like myself. And so had had some years of rebellion against God and then uh, became a Christian because of a radio program. He was um, saved by the radio, mm -hmm. really good for praise him. God. And he um, got into a relationship with me because I had said that I was a Christian. Didn't actually relate with Mormonism, but I didn't want to deny Christ. I knew, you know, Christ was was king. I always Good knew that. For you. Yeah. But I I was really far from God. I really didn't know much about Christianity and but especially you, But you coming, thought you were one. <laughs> I thought I was one. Yeah. Because you know, as a Mormon you also think you're Christian. Yeah. You just know, well I believe in Jesus Christ and so right. therefore yeah. you know, I'm a Christian when you when the doctrine is so vastly different, um, your eyes are blinded to the true gospel of Jesus Christ, as I felt. Anyway, we went to church together. Long story, we had a conversation and an actual argument about um, sin and how I didn't think I was a sinner because I was prized too, I had too much pride about being a good person or doing good things yeah. and, and yeah, just couldn't as admit. Mormon, as a Mormon, we never say that we're a sinner. Sinner. We're, we're we not don't, perfect. You don't. But you're not a sinner. We, we talk about how we're good or how we're worthy or how we you know, can do so much service, right. sort of patting ourselves on the back, if you will. Whereas um, in Christianity, you know, it's, I know I'm not good. You know, I know I'm not worthy. No, none are good, the Bible you, says. You brought something. Did you have Oh, it was, um, it was a baptismal covenant just because my father wasn't um, part of um, the church as far as in the priesthood. Being really again? And all. I, yeah. yeah, I believe he was baptized as a child also, right, but, but. Um, you know, strayed from the church in adulthood after the, the service. Um, so I was baptized by my brothers, and there was um, a baptismal covenant that my um, mother had saved for me, put in a genealogy book for me, so it's sort of rather long. And it's a baptismal covenant, and I think it's interesting, the first Yeah, the little phrase quote out of Doctrine and from Covenants, Doctrine and covenants. 8210, read that. Okay. It says that, I, the Lord, am bound when ye do what I say, but when you do not do what I say, 
you have no promise, <laughs> which is really just that um, conditioned, um, conditional love. You know, God yeah. doesn't really forgive me or love me if Unless. I don't do, you know, I don't abide by the covenant yes. uh, commandments and, and rules of the uh, Mormon gospel. So, yeah. And he's bound when, when we do what he says. And I, sure. That's one of the things that struck me that I could put God in my debt. You know, that I had that much power that I could put God in my, my debt. And I'd, that, that really struck me, too. So Sure. Now, the first time you went to a church, I had, uh, had this little, you, you wrote this, and I thought it was so good. You said, yes. it was almost liberating, and I cried at the beautiful worship music. It was so different than the orthodox singing and preaching in Mormonism. It was almost liberating to hear the preaching of the Word, not just speakers on various topics. That's so telling. Mm -hmm. And the really godly leadership by imperfect preachers and pastors who had biblical training. The, difference are vast, the differences are vast and Mormonism now seems now like the monotone lack of knowledge and understanding of spiritual things. But I like that godly leadership by imperfect men. Mm -hmm. And Mormons won't ever admit that. I mean, bishops are put on pedestals of yes. sorts and stake presidents, stake presidents and certainly the general authorities. True. So, but how, uh, talk about the music though. Did you enjoy that at first? And yes, I mean, when I, when I attended my first uh, Christian worship service on a Sunday, I, again, it was with my boyfriend at the time, husband now, um, I was overcome, you know, by, by joy, by, I was crying. I felt like it had. was, it was the love, it was God pursuing me and I was very overcome. Uh, I am still today, but <laughs> it's it's a different feeling, and it, and it's really not just about the feelings because I, I know in Mormonism you always had we had these spiritual experiences, and we'd have good feelings, and you'd be overcome and feel mm -hmm. like you know you want to go out and help somebody or you you somebody came to your mind, uh, which could be God's leading, but I I didn't want to lean on my feelings necessarily. It was just um, being able to hear the Word of God preached in a totally different way and understand that indeed we are all sinners, but that's okay because Christ died for us all. And paid for our sins. Yeah, yeah. once and for all. Well, there was such an awe of being able to sing those words and <clears throat> worship and praise God <clears throat> in a way that I never had yeah. as a Mormon. Right, and yeah. I felt right at home. I mean, the music is totally different. You yeah. know, there are Christian churches. When I go um, to see our, our um, in-laws, uh, they're part of a more of an Orthodox Christian organization, yeah. and you know, they do <coughs> traditional hymns and things like that. And I yeah. suppose to some extent we do too, uh, but it's just a, it's a different feeling. It doesn't <laughs> feel, I guess, stale or even fake. I, I mean, yeah. it feels like sometimes in Mormonism you have that. I know. Um, you know, sort of fake. Uh, you put on a good face. You yeah, put, you know, facade or something. Facade, say, yeah. yes. Where the family, you know, everybody has to be perfect, perfectly behaved. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, don't show any real. And no weakness ever. Or no. Or no flaws or anything. Yeah, we don't yeah. admit to that. But in a, no. a, a circle of Christian friends, it's okay to admit that you're struggling, or it's okay to admit that. <laughs> You well, know, that, that, you're, you're, that you're afraid or yeah, whatever. Or they're having a question about doctrine or something, you know, and, and that we kind of talked about that last week, or last visit that I had w with a young lady that in Mormonism, you just don't ever express those kinds of questions or anything because you almost would be shunned yeah. if you brought up some, some bad topics or something where as a Christian, you're willing to admit that you don't know everything and yeah and, uh, and that it's okay to question yeah. or that you that you need to study it out yeah. you know like a, a, a Brienne you want to you know they went home after they heard the Word of God um, and they would go home and study in their Bibles to see if this was true yeah you know so I feel like um, God gives you kind of a uh, a real unsatiable uh, want to be able to study and yeah. to seek things out that are true. Yeah, and the Bible, I, I don't know what you recall as a Mormon, but did you spend much time in the Bible? I don't think um, kind of stuff? we spent much time in the Bible. I, you know, we had, we'd have some passages or some uh, quotes and scripture yeah. uh, that would kind of coincide with any of the Mormon or the Book of Mormon um, literature. <laughs> That's what I call that. Uh, but it wasn't an emphasis. 
and nor did I ever really read the Bible through. My yeah. parents, ironically enough, gave me an actual Bible for an Easter present one year oh. instead of like a quad or something. It was just a Christian Bible. And yeah. so I always just, um, you know, like when I look back on my life, I think, you know, God was wooing me in some ways. Yeah. And I just didn't recognize it until <laughs> I was older. So the Bible means a little bit more to you now? And yeah, very special. study it? Right. Yeah, I, I just feel like it has the gospel. It's a simple message, isn't it? Uh, the gospel is un, um, uncomplicated now. Yeah. Uh, you know, where in Mormonism you felt like you've got these four different scripture, plus you've got all the good works and temple works and all of that on top of it. Yeah. But when you realize um, in Christianity and the vast differences between the two gospels, you know, it's another gospel, like it Paul really said is in Galatians. Gospel. Uh, whereas the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, you know, according to the Holy Bible, the truth, yeah. as I believe it, and um, of course I have a biblical worldview, <laughs> uh, it's um, vastly different simply because it's uncomplicated. Yeah. You know, God wants you to uh, be born again to recognize what Christ did for you on the cross. Yeah and washed your sin away. All that red scarlet can be white as snow. Yeah. If you just accept that free yeah, gift, like right. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Right. And that it's very uncomplicated. Grace was not something we talked about either. No, yeah, but grace is, yeah, we didn't talk about that as Mormons. Not much. Did, other than grace, after all you can all do. All you can do, like in Nephi. <laughs> Jesus kind of finishes the, the end of it, but uh, it, yeah, I, you, did you didn't understand grace as a Mormon then at all? No, yeah. I, we didn't talk about it much, and it didn't. It was always, it was an obligatory gospel. Yeah. Um, you always felt like you had to be, you know, live a certain way and have yeah. a, have no sin and, you know, become righteous and become worthy. Which is interesting because if you go into a an interview with a bishop, or a state president for any of your temple callings or any of your, um, you know, just annual meetings and such. I think it was to go into the temple that you needed to have an interview. Yeah. Um, you know, they'd ask probing questions and you'd think, does everybody really on honestly answer these questions or do they lie when they're in the bishop interview? That's yeah. how I felt. It's like most people would lie because I certainly did. I certainly I, have to. I lied so that <laughs> I looked like I was worthy so that I could um, I attend the camp temple for the baptism for the dead so yeah. that... I think I that happens a lot so with everybody can, else. Yeah, but going, kind of getting back to Jesus, but I, I love the scripture of he that believeth in me hath everlasting life. And it's just so simple, so simple. godlike, I call it, uh, because it is so simple without, like you said, adding all the other stuff to yeah. it. You did say something though about grace and I thought it was interesting. You said it seems too easy for Mormons to understand. Yeah, I, I get the comp comment often from the fam my family is um, still uh, that are active, very still? active yeah. and also even the ones that are inactive are very obligated to the Mormon church even though uh, they don't attend church they still subscribe to yeah. the teachings of the LDS and yeah. uh, as I talk to them about grace it's very difficult um, because they think well that just means you know that you can do whatever you want because grace has saved you. And so they just, it's not, a, there's not, not a complete understanding, understanding of what that really means. Yeah, difficult to have conversations. Yeah. Um, so I just lead by example. Um, I do have two out of my three children who are actually try, l l seeing the differences between Mormonism and Christianity. Okay and have somewhat discounted Mormonism. So mm. I, that's kind of hopeful. Yeah, planted um, some seeds there. And, yeah, I yeah. plant the seeds, God waters it, God <laughs> yeah. grows it, um, because it's for His glory. The rest of your family, is it? Well, I am the first um, Christian. I used to say that I was the only Christian in the family, but because um, we have a very powerful God yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who can do anything, um, I've decided that I should just say I'm the first Christian of my yeah. immediate family. <laughs> and even, Hoping there's more to come. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I trust them. Oh, that's good. Well, and, and, a, and a happy marriage and yes. and you go together. That's wonderful. Isn't yeah. It, yeah. I've been be, blessed to, yeah. with, a, with a second chance in life and, uh, you know, second chances on God's grace. You know, I feel like he's, he really pursued me and, um, 
really was calling me into his kingdom. You look and back and see all those little moments when he was tugging at you a little yes. bit. And, and, and I was rebelling, but <laughs> eventually, you know, I got there, so. He, he, I, I just kind of have to think he has a sense of humor in the, in the sense that he, he, he sees us struggling and he knows where, but he also knows what's around the corner. Yes. And he knows that you're going to be finding your good husband and sure. you'll be attending a church and, he, and have that freedom and joy. Well, there's just a minute or so left. What, do you have anything you'd want to say to your family? And uh, yeah, that, that um, you know, that I pray every day that, you know, something or someone um, can help show them the grace of God. I know that God uh, does it alone and I don't even pretend to, um, you know, lead in any right. way that he's, he's the one that uh, seeks and saves, like in Luke 19.10, but also that um, because I was born into Mormonism, I feel like I, my mind was clouded, my heart was clouded. I needed to um, pursue Him and pursue His truth by learning what the real gospel of Jesus Christ is, comparing it to the counterfeits, and then you will have no problem uh, walking in the way of truth. Yeah. I know I've, we kind of talk about this in a, in a certain sort of way that we know more about Mormonism now than we ever did as Mormons. Do you find, are you in that category too? I definitely too? am. I did a lot of internet research, a yeah. lot of reading. Yeah. Um, uh, both the Wilders um, had inspired me, Sean McCraney's show, your show to a certain extent, and uh, Doris Hansen's show, the Polygamy, Polygamy what, what Love Is This. this. Uh, my eyes were opened by all the material that's online to be able to make those comparisons for yourself. Look at the gospel of Mormonism. Look at the gospel of Christianity and do your comparisons. Interesting. Don't take my word for it. You know, well, study um, it out. If we've got two seconds, did you ever notice Joseph Smith or Brigham Young's polygamy in, in your ancestry research? Was that? Yeah, I mean, I knew they were two? polygamists and that my family was polygamous, so that always brought questions to my mind as a yeah. child. So yeah. again, Mormonism really didn't ever mesh in my heart. Isn't that interesting? Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sheila, thanks so much for sharing your Thank story you. and uh, you're a delightful young lady. And uh, Terry Long's a great pastor sure over is. there at Calvary Chapel. That's and, right. Yeah, and I've <laughs> attended those a number of times. And in fact, we met at a, a baptism here recently over there. Didn't yes. We? Yeah. Again, I mean, we'd met before. But yes. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for having me. I'm glad yeah, I made it I out. Appreciate and you sharing and able. Yeah, it's, it's such a joy to, and a freedom, right, that you just don't feel, and the guilt, like yeah. you say, is, is all gone. Yeah, so. the shame's gone. Yeah, the shame. God took well, it I away. hope people will pay attention to that and even think and just step back a little bit, maybe study a little bit. And, right. and uh, we appreciate joining us. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>